Hi right, guys. I cannot believe it. There's there's some strange looking light up in the sky uh, sending out this bright light all over the mold in upstate New York here in the end times today. On the last day of May, the last day of May we are getting a few stray rays of sunshine in the Finger Lakes of uh, upstate New York here on Friday afternoon, May 31st, 2019. So I want to get into a talking about uh, stray rays of sunshine. I want to get into this big story about and from the Washington Post from uh, the flooding over in uh, out in the Midwest uh, as part of my Friday Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant. Now, as you probably have started to figure out, I took the Manga Bay Roundup. It is over at Collapse Chronicles, where people might actually listen to the rant over there. So you can find the, manga, the full Manga Bay Roundup of stories over at Collapse Chronicles. And I will just run through the headlines at the very end of this rant to tell you what's going on over there. And uh, for the Washington Post, we're going to center on one story. But before we dive into the main story about how we are so fucked, this is a combination uh, uh, ecological roundup rant and a we are so fucked doomer headline story. Let's just go over here for a few minutes to the Center for Biological Diversity. And we're going to go take a look at their Endangered Earth uh, Roundup for the last week of May. And it looks like the Center for Biological Diversity is in full lawsuit mode as they have been. They have been in lawsuit overdrive since you know who uh, took over at the White House. So what is going on this week? Trump sued to save eight species on the brink. President Donald Trump's U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has failed to safeguard seven animals in one plant that its own scientists admit desperately need protection. This is just the latest lapse of this agency under Trump, whose officials have so far protected fewer species under the Endangered Species Act than any administration in more than 30 years. That would probably be since the Ronald Reagan administration. This is Noah Greenwald uh, from the center. Quote, delay means death for these creatures. The Trump administration's refusal to protect our highly imperiled animals and plants signals a sickening hostility to wildlife and the natural world that sustains us all. Close quote. Anyway, and here is how the center is fighting pollution in court from coast to coast. The center works to protect both wildlife and human health from toxic, toxic substances. In the past week, we and our allies took legal action to address three pollution cases. Okay. We petitioned Florida to protect people from toxins in harmful algae blooms that have been linked to liver disease and neurodegenerative risks. Yes, and then we sued the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to force action on smog and soot pollution affecting more than one and a half million people in Arizona and California. And we sued the JBS Swift 
Beef Company to stop illegal discharges of slaughterhouse pollution into Colorado's South Platte River. A busy week in, uh, at the center. Okay, I love it when they ask a question. Why don't we hear about more extinctions? We are in the middle of a global extinction crisis. Media worldwide covered the recent UN report predicting that in the next few decades up to one million species will disappear due to human impacts. So, why aren't we hearing about animal and plant extinctions every week or every day? That's because as the editors, what was it? 31 of the top 50 newspapers uh, in the U.S. never mentioned that new U.N. report the, uh, talking about how we are so fucked. It's because people don't want to hear about the one million species of our fellow earthlings being obliterated off the face of the earth because of humans. They have no interest in this subject, which is why is which is why is the tail wags the dog, or what is that saying? Anyway, uh, what else do we have going on? Okay, I love it when they ask us to take action. All right, we are supposed to take action to prevent another Santa Barbara oil spill. This month marks the fourth anniversary of the catastrophic failure of the Plains All-American Pipeline off the coast of Santa Barbara. Its rupture on May 19, 2015 spilled more than 120,000 gallons of oil near Refugio State Beach, killing hundreds of birds and marine mammals. Now, federal agencies are considering letting this company build a new pipeline along the same route. Yes, to make matters even worse, the pipeline would allow several aging offshore drilling platforms to rise from the dead and start pumping once again. Okay, the Center for Biological Diversity diversity is asking us to tell the feds to reject Plains application to rebuild its dirty pipeline. Feds, feds, are you listening to me, goddammit? I am talking to you, feds, and I am telling you in no uncertain terms, I want you to reject Plains application to rebuild its dirty pipeline. God damn it, are you listening to me? All right, now that the feds have agreed not to build their dirty pipeline, let's see if they can listen uh, to the majority of Americans demanding that wolves stay protected. A new center of biodiversity, uh, poll shows that the, um, the majority of Americans oppose the Trump administration proposal to end Endangered Species Act protections for gray wolves in nearly all the lower 58 states. Of 555 registered voters surveyed, 63% want that protection kept in place. This is Steph, Stephanie Kuros of the Center's Endangered Species Poly Specialist. Quote, with such widespread public support for wolves, Trump should scrap his wrong-headed plan. All right, we're, we're, we're having another call for action I cannot believe it. We're having two calls for action in one 
uh, endangered Earth newsletter. Okay, take action to defend our public lands from Trump's push for coal. In 2016, the U.S. federal coal leasing program was officially put on hold to look at its climate pollution and faltering economics. But now, President Donald Trump wants to resume selling off our beautiful public lands to the coal industry, no matter the cost to our future, and we need you to help stop Donald Trump. His administration has simply launched a new plan for more coal leasing across the country and, in effect, told us not to worry because it will have no significant impacts. That conclusion is wrong and dangerous. Hmm. More than 13% of all U.S. carbon dioxide pollution came from federal coal in 2014. And each new lease means more harm to our air, water, wildlife, and climate. So act now to tell the Trump administration that the coal leasing moratorium must stay. Donald Trump administration, are you listening to me, God damn it, you evil motherfuckers? Are you listening to me? I want you to let the coal leasing moratorium stay in place. All right. Thank God. Uh, now that the coal moratorium has been left in place, because Hambo Littledale took some goddamn action. Instead of just sitting here bitching, I am taking action. Anybody acting like that Hambo Littletail is not taking any action. I have taken two actions. I have, uh, right now in the last five minutes, I have had a coal leasing moratorium on our federal lands stay in place. There will be no more coal mining on federal lands under Donald Trump. And there will not be a, a new pipeline in, off the coast of Santa Barbara. I have done my part. I want to know what the fuck you have done in your own individual consumer and lifestyle choices to take action. You know? Get off your ass. All right. We have some hopium. We do have some hopium. Court upholds hope for near extinct porpoise. This would be we now have hopium for the vaquita. There are only about 10 individual vaquitas left in the entire world, but the Trump administration has been trying to end a ban on Mexican shrimp and finfish imports caught with gill nets in the Gulf of California. Nets largely responsible for the vaquitas plummet toward extinction, but all is not lost. A U.S. Court of Appeals has rejected Donald Trump's request, leaving a glimmer of hope a glimmer of hope for the last 10 individual vaquita porpoises left on planet Earth. But we're going to close with, for anyone who does not realize this, the beef industry bites. This is why I do not eat beef. The beef industry takes a big chomp out of the world's resources and doesn't show many signs of biting off less, writes the center's Jennifer Molador in EcoWatch. Beef is a leading contributor to climate change and species loss, yet the U.S. cattle industry's hilariously named Round Table on Sustainable Beef Roundtable on Sustainable Beef 
is paying lip service, lip service to action by offering its joke, weak, voluntary sustainability framework, and it just does not hold meat producers accountable. Do you think so? Okay, and as I say, I'm going to go over the Manga Bay uh, headlines in just a minute, but we're going to turn over to our main story of the day, which is going to also qualify as our We Are So Fuck Boomer headline of the day, and this is the Washington Post weighing in uh, this week on extreme weather is pummeling the Midwest and farmers are in deep trouble. Yes. In Kendall Colt's corner of northwest Indiana, relentless rain began falling on his farm months ago, saturating the ground his family has nurtured for generations and delaying the start of their planting season by more than a week. And they're talking about Indiana. I mean, up here in, in upstate New York, as far as I can tell, nobody has even planted their corn yet. It's going to be June 1st tomorrow, and I see almost no indication that any corn has been planted here in New York. They don't even talk about New York in this article. The rain eased up briefly at the end of April, enough time to plant corn on about 350 of his 2,000 acres, then the rain started falling all over again. Quote, there's just not a lot you can do. Do you think so? Uh, nearly 90% of his corn crop is already growing as a result of a few hard days and long strategic hours in the field but he has yet to plant a single soybean, and last year he was done planting everything by the first week of May. Uh, quote, I have never had a yield where I could not get my, a, I think they meant a year, where I could not get my crop planted, Culp said, noting that his father, who is in his 80s, recalled the same. Quote, this is unprecedented what we are facing. For months now, the cults and many farmers across wide swaths of the Midwest have rarely seen days dry enough to work, leading to what agricultural experts are calling a historically delayed planting season that could exacerbate the economic and personal anxieties brought on by a multi-year slump in farm prices, not to mention the Trump administration's trade war with China, the world's largest soybean buyer. For the past five years, the 18 states that produce the majority of the United States corn crop had an average of 90% of their fields planted by the end of May, meaning today. Uh, at the same point, this year, 58% of the corn crop has made it into the ground, and the outlook for soybeans is even more dismal with 29% of soybeans in the ground compared with 66% uh, last year. And in individual states, the gap is even more severe. Just 22% of the corn uh, crop had been planted as of May 26 in Indiana with soybeans at 11% uh, in the ground. This is John Newton, chief economist at the American Farm Bureau, noting that this was the worst planting day on record since the USDA began tracking such data in the 1980s. Quote, 
week after week, farmers have not been able to get out in the fields to plant corn and soybeans. The frequencies of these disaster, disasters, I cannot say we have experienced anything like this since I, be, since I have been working in agriculture, close quote. So from the Rocky Mountains to the Ohio River Valley, millions of Midwesterners have endured unremitting rainfall hundreds of dangerous tornadoes and debilitating flooding brought on by swollen waterways that are spilling into already saturated ground, much of that farmland. Of the 6,000 flood gauges that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration maintains on water ways across the country, 381 uh, gauges were above flood stage this week across the Central Plains and in the upper Midwest. Much of the most severe flooding is concentrated in Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, South Dakota, and Oklahoma, where on Tuesday the governor declared all 77 counties in Oklahoma under a state of emergency. Yes, in 2019, NOAA has processed nearly 200 more tornado reports than average at this point uh, in the year. Uh, online, people have shared maps of the Midwest completely underwater, joking that it's all the new Great Lakes. Uh, farmers have asked for your prayers. There you go. Uh, and so, here is the, so here is the, you know, here, here's where we get to the part of the story that doomers don't like to hear. Although the setback is causing duress among farmers, it may not necessarily be felt by many consumers in the grocery store. Much of the corn crop being affected is grown for livestock feed and ethanol processing. So potential shortage, shortages of both of these might drive up those prices. Uh, and then they, uh, they talk about how all of this is hitting in the context of a multi-year slump in farm prices. Uh, Quoting uh, Alyssa Harvey, director of Farm Aid, it's another wave of an ongoing crisis. It is a perfect storm. It cannot be overstated the amount of stress and angst in farm country right now. Uh, Harvey said, there are farmers who chose to fill their silos and wait out the suppressed prices only to have floodwaters wash it all away. Some farmers, huh, some farmers blame this spring's extreme weather on climate change. Another example of the way Mother Nature has become increasingly unruly and predictable alongside historically strong hurricanes, bitter cold, and devastating deadly wildfires. Others, like Farmer Culp, say they have accepted that farmers cannot control the weather and should instead Looked to look to federal aid and insurance program programs that help people like him when the crops don't cooperate. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, anyway, and guys, well, this, uh, this article goes on and on. I will put the, uh, the link, um, to this. Let's move on down, uh, the story here. Harvey said that the Farm Aid hotline has been inundated with calls from concerned farmers who are actively in disaster triage. Last year they had a 109% increase in calls over those received in 2017. Usually about 20 to 30% of calls are crisis related. By the end of last year, nearly 75% were related to natural disasters. Most weeks they get calls from farmers who say they are suicidal. This is Bev Lydic, whose family has been farming in Nebraska since 1857. Quote, I can't even hardly put it into words. It's just so defeating. We have water standing in some fields that we have never seen water stand in. She said she believes climate change is a contributing factor and joins a chorus of other farmers in her small community who think the Army Corps of Engineers and Congress bear some responsibility for the way their waterways are being managed. And now the next hurdle farmers face is what to do about crop insurance. Uh, each state has deadlines for full coverage, meaning farmers must have their crops in the ground by a certain date to qualify for assistance. Uh, and some of these deadlines have already passed or are fast approaching. Closing with this quote from Farmer Culp, quote, It becomes an economic decision. I do think about next year. What's the seed supply going to be next year? Everybody is just trying to get through this planting season. I bet they are. You know, guys, uh, thank you, Washington Post. And before I get out of here, uh, I'm just going to run down the headlines, Very some, some of the headlines from Manga Bay. You can uh, find uh, the full coverage over on Collapse Chronicles. They start out talking about this giant reptile fair selling all of these endangered reptiles in Germany. Then they go down to look at the, the ape trade devastating Nigeria's apes. Of course, they talk about the last dead, uh, the last male dead rhino in Malaysia. They joke about conservation in Namibia. They start looking at, at how humans and chimpanzees cannot be told apart. Here is uh, more articles on biological deserts. Uh, this very weird story which I made the, uh, the headline about otter cafes. You heard me right. Otter cafes and the cute pets craze. Uh, killing otters and all of these other animals. This weird story about how the United Nations is now officially recognizing traditional Chinese medicine. We go look at the single most fucked place on the planet, the Harapan Forest, 
in southern Sumatra. Let's see uh, the jokes about these marine protected areas. We look at the stumps of mystery forest. We look at how Ecuador's isolated indigenous tribes are completely fucked. We look at uh, the coal industry having the country of Indonesia in its pocket. Uh, anyway, a lot going on in the collapse of a planet over at Manga Bay. But anyway, I've got to wrap up this week's uh, ecological meltdown roundup rant because uh, I have a gig in, uh, in two hours. I'm supposed to be having a gig at an open mic and I need to go practice for my gig getting out there and enjoying it while I still can by getting together. We're going to have a little mini meetup, uh, a little Humpty Dumpty Tribe meetup at the open mic tonight. I will see you doomers there. Get out there and make music while you still can. Bye, guys.